right, we have another S2000 here. This is here for a valve adjustment, and of course, without a valve adjustment, we do a full valve cover gasket kit. This has a little bit of a leak he was reporting. I'm gonna look around, it kinda looks like it's from the back there. You see that on the back of the head? I'll show you this when we pull it apart. The gaskets tend to get almost like a plastic, and lose their ability to uh, seal and you know keep a constant tension between the surfaces, so they leak. This is also another known spot for leaking. This is the there's an O-ring around there, and then on this side, the VTEC solenoid and the timing chain tensioner can often leak. Looking around there, it's pretty dry. Telltale sign is usually that water hose above the oil filter that would usually get wet and it's a, a usually a dead ringer that is leaking so let's go ahead and take this valve cover off and we'll take a look we'll look down back of the head and it should tell us if we're leaking on the back also real quick what i did want to mention when the hood is in its normal up position it's pretty tight working back here so a trick i've shown this before but i'll show it again just so you can see it this comes out right here it's a rubber grommet in there, like a plastic grommet. And then it's going to go into a hole there. All right, see that? And then it goes in this right here on the passenger side. You'll see that slot looks just like the conventional one right there. But now the hood opens all the way up. You can access all the back of the motor now. Okay, so the valve cover is removed. Uh, it did have a little bit of leaking down the back of the head. Nothing major, but it was enough uh, that you could smell it. And it's got like a little damp look around there. So this car has been sitting under the fan for about four hours just to get as close to what we'd say room temperature as possible. Now the valve cover's off, I'm gonna leave it for a little bit longer just to help everything balance out and cool off so we get a accurate valve adjustment. But everything looks good under here. Doesn't look like there is anywhere. Everything is in nice shape. So valve cover gaskets, this is the part number. This has the valve cover gasket and of course the grommets with the little uh, built-on washer. You're gonna need that pack that will do the valve cover now these are the tube seals this is the piece that goes under the valve cover that seals the tube coming up that the spark plug goes down to stop the oil coming around and then going down that tube if you ever pull your spark plug and you see the whole uh, spark plug is saturated with oil it's usually this tube seal right here and this is the part number so I wanted to talk about valve lash valve adjustment, however you want to call it. Now this is the Honda manual. This is the official manual, the one that we go by. Now it talks about clearance right here. This is where you're going to take a measurement on the tip of the valve. Now this, I'm going to refer to stock cams, but this is the uh, intake and exhaust. This is the adjustment. Basically you can see from here, 8 to 10 on the intake, 10 to 11 on the exhaust. Now, I'll give you an idea how many thickness of 8 or 10,000 is. Think of this page. This is about four thousandths of an inch thick. To give you an idea, we're working with a, a very accurate adjustment. And also the cam orientation. A lot of people go the old school way, put the cam on the base of the lobe. That is not the case on a Honda. They specifically tell you where these cams want to be. And if you look at that, you can actually see by this picture right here, this is the high spot of the lobe. So we're not exactly on the base of the lobe. It's actually off a little bit. So I can't stress how important it is to get your valve lash absolutely perfect. I'm going to show you a little diagram right here. Now this is a quick diagram I drew just to try and explain what I'm talking about here. Now the valve lash that we are measuring on the S2000 is right here. This is the amount when the engine is cold that you're going to adjust. This is the camshaft. It's basically rocking this back and forth as this comes up. This pushes the valve down as the cam spins. It releases that. That's where you're going to measure the valve lash. Now the reason it's so important to get that valve lash correct when the engine is cold, think of this is the cylinder head, this is the valve, this is the rocker, this is the cam, this is the piston. As it heats, everything expands just a little amount. Well, 
everything expanding will add up to a greater amount than just any one component. But let's say right now we have this on the base of the cam. So the cam is here. This is cold, this is closed. This is your valve sealing surface right here. This needs to be tight inside the head. This area needs to be clean. When you've seen anybody do a valve job or cut a valve, this is the area that is a sealing area. Now, multi-step clearances, you'll hear of a three or a five access cut on the valve. That refers to the end of here, but we're concerned with the sealing surface. So let's say the valve adjustment is tight, cold. As everything heats up, this expands, this expands. You could potentially go from having a gap here to having zero gap, which would be zero lash, and actually put some tension on this valve. Now the bad thing about that is when this valve comes up, it needs to seal this surface. It needs to keep that surface clean. As the piston comes up and fires, you've got combustion here, which is basically a massive explosion. The explosion is going every different which way. It's pushing the piston down. If you have zero gap here and this valve isn't closed 100%, this combustion will actually come around here and burn the seal on that valve and the head. Once it's burnt, it will pit and tend to get damaged. It'll never be completely right again unless you take it apart, cut the valve, and cut the seat. So I like to set this lash on the higher end. Let's say we have, uh, you know, eight to 10. I would set this when it's cold at 10. I would set it at a tight 10, which means the feeler gauge will go in. It'll be tight, it'll drag but it's on the tight side. Never go to this side. On a race application, the harder you run the car, the hotter it gets, the more expansion you get, the less whatever gap you have here will be less, which can cause this valve to stay slightly open and burn. I'd always like to hear a slightly noisy valve than a super quiet sewing machine sounded engine. Makes you feel good that the engine's in good shape. Quiet usually means you have no lash here, which means this can happen. This isn't an easy fix. Take the cylinder head off, do a valve job, put it back together. It's a lot easier to run a looser lash. So for instance, on the exhaust side, I've already done all the valves I set this last one. On this engine, every valve has been a little on the tight side. So to give you an idea, this is my feeler gauge right here. Put it in this lash here. It's very, very tight. This is on the tighter side. This is a 10. To get it in here, that's way too tight. I mean, I'm putting pressure on it to get it in, which means I'm pushing the valve down ever so slightly. And again, we're working with thousands of an inch here. So this is too tight. You see that? That is just way too tight. Okay, so I know I adjusted this valve and it's, it's by feel. There's so many people ask me, how do you adjust the valves? How do you set it? How do you know when it's too tight? Well, you're gonna do this by feel. Make sure that this is in there perfectly straight and it should just drag. I don't know if you can hear that. As it pushes back and forth, it pushes the oil between. It basically gets a dry surface. And that is a perfect feel right there. And again, I'm doing it by feel, not a lot of pressure, not a lot of force. And when you pull this feeler gauge out, you're not hearing it snap, but you're hearing it drag. So that is the right feel on your valve. So I actually did a tech Wednesday how to do this. And of course, yeah, everybody knows a better way than I do it. But one thing I'm gonna tell you, dry the surface as much as you can, because oil will constantly run off here and run on this surface. I've just wiped it off and you can see there is already oil there. But you're gonna dry all this surface so that when you put the new valve cover down, you're not gonna uh, squirt excess oil out. So do that first. These are the spark plug tubes right here. Now the tube seal goes over that. It's a seal that presses over this as you push the valve cover down. Now once you've installed the new tube seal, I always put an extra layer of uh, oil on here so this is slick. This is what's going to push down over the spark plug tube. This is obviously the seal. It's the new seals. These are nice and flexible now. The, uh, oh, the old ones get kind of like a plastic and they don't work anymore. 
always get the Honda OEM stuff. It fits the best right down to the, the, the valve cover gasket. The shape here, it's inbuilt in the gasket. As you lift this gasket up, look, it's following the shape. It's the absolute perfect one. Don't get the cheap uh, imitation gasket. This will be worth the extra money. Okay, so we're all back together. Went ahead and cleaned up the spark plug cover. You've seen that in our videos, and of course, uh, supply some nice stainless Allen bolts in there. It just looks nicer. It also kind of makes you realize we were in there. So one thing you should always do, return the old customer's parts, even if he just looks at them and throws them in the bin. It's kind of that peace of mind. You got charged for something, and it's just so you take the doubt of your mind if those parts were actually replaced. So always give him the old parts back as well as the gasket kit.